Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware, and we're here with a look at LG's new G3 flagship Android smartphone. The LG G3, fittingly, is the follow-on to LG's G2. Go figure. And its most notable feature, however, boasts a 5.5-inch QHD or Quad HD display with a native resolution of 2560 by 1440. It's the highest pixel per inch density of any smartphone on the market currently at 538 ppi the g3 is running android 4.4.2 kitkat and is powered by qualcomm's latest snapdragon 801 system on a chip clocked at 2.5 gigahertz this is essentially the same processor and clock speed powering samsung's recently launched galaxy s5 smartphone the g3 however is outfitted with 3 gig of ram versus the gs5's 2 gig setup and it has 32 gig of onboard storage and the ability to expand that via the G3's micro SD card slot up to another 128 gigabytes. Also on board is a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with dual LED flash, optical image stabilization, and an all new laser autofocus technology for claimed super fast focus response times. Finally, the G3 also sports the latest 802.11ac wireless connectivity, Bluetooth 4, NFC, and is of course 4G LTE capable. And all of this technology is powered by a large removable 3000 milliamp hour battery. The G3 is a well-built phone with an aluminum frame around its QHD display and the thinnest of bezels. The back of the device has a removable plastic cover with a pewter color brushed aluminum look to it. Interestingly, this metallic painted skin has a better feel in the hand and minimizes fingerprints really well compared to many of the other flagship smartphone designs on the market currently with plastic backings. Also, the G3's floating arc shape does cradle well in the hand and trims the phone's profile down nicely, making this 5.5 inch device feel much more pocketable versus other devices on the market in its weight class. On the bottom screen area, you'll find translucent menu, home, and back buttons. While I generally prefer these controls be placed on the bezel area to maximize screen real estate, the buttons are translucent, so they only partially obstruct the bottom of the G3's large IPS display. On bottom, you'll find the headphone jack, a USB 2 port, and a microphone port. On the top face is the G3's earpiece speaker and front-facing 2.1 megapixel camera. On the top edge of the device is another microphone port and the G3's IR Blaster LED for its Q remote capability to control devices in your home. And due to the fact that we're working with a very early Korean model of the G3, this model has an integrated antenna specifically for Korean broadcasts. US carrier supported devices won't have this antenna on board. On the right edge of the device is a small notch to help remove the G3's backing, and the left edge is bare. The back side of the G3 is where all the action is, however. Again, the rear cover resists fingerprints really well, and back here is LG's signature three-button placement consisting of a volume rocker and power button combination. Also here you'll find the G3's 13 megapixel camera, its dual LED flash, and the camera's auto-focusing laser. More on this later, but in short, the G3 employs laser targeting to assist the camera's auto-focusing engine with respect to target range, etc. Pretty cool, actually. Now we've got phones with frickin' laser beams. Gotta love it. And ripping off the backside cover of the G3, you'll find the phone's ample 3000 milliamp hour battery, as well as its rear mounted 1 watt speaker. The G3's audio output quality is pretty strong, though with the speaker back here, it can get muffled in your hand or if placed on a cloth or other soft surface. Also back here, you can see the G3's micro SIM card slot, and the device is available across multiple carriers, including AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. Pushing the rear button turns the phone's display on and off, and though it may take a bit of getting used to if you're familiar with devices that place this control on the side edge, in practice this placement tends to be just as convenient, along with the G3's volume rocker back here as well. In addition, like LG's previous generation G2 device, the G3 has LG knock-on control set up to turn the display on or off without the need to access that rear button. LG has also introduced Not Code with the G3 that allows you to customize a series of screen tabs that will turn the display on and unlock the phone. 
There are four regions of the screen that you can tap and have the phone programmed to respond only to that sequence of taps. In theory, it looks like a solid security feature, though we found it to be a bit cumbersome in practice and ended up working with the traditional swipe unlock methods. This is a personal preference, however. Your mileage may vary and your success rate may vary as well. Speaking of the G3's display, it's pretty gorgeous. It's a 5.5 inch IPS panel with currently the highest resolution available in any smartphone on the market at 2560 by 1440 with a squeaky tight 538 ppi pixel density. What this means is there's a lot more detail shown on the display, though whether your eye can differentiate between this level of fidelity versus other superphones built with, say, a 1920 by 1080 panel is another question. To us, the G3's display has moderate light output that tends to come up a bit soft in daylight conditions, though color saturation and temperature settings for the display are excellent. Viewing angle capability for the G3 isn't quite as wide as, say, the AMOLED displays found on Samsung devices like the Galaxy Note 3 you see here. Notice, however, how much smaller the G3 is compared to the Note 3. While the Note 3 only sports a slightly larger 5.7 inch display, LG really packed a lot of display into a compact frame with the G3. In terms of overall performance and fidelity, the G3's display is about on par with most top devices on the market today, including the LG built Google Nexus 5. However, it doesn't quite catch Samsung's Galaxy S5 in our opinion. Although, if ultra high resolution is what you're after, none can match the LG G3 currently. Now, with respect to the G3's ultra high res QHD display, the question becomes what are you actually going to do with a smartphone that's capable of this resolution? There's no question that text looks super crisp, and LG's high def app icons that they built into their Android. KitKat package are actually really nice, but beyond that, there aren't many apps or games in the Android ecosystem that are currently capable of taking advantage of this high resolution, with the possible exception, of course, of being able to fit a bit more in your web browser window. Incidentally, fonts can get pretty tight at 2560 by 1440 resolution on a 5.5 inch display, so you might want to dial them up a bit in the browser settings. That said, for viewing high def content, on the other hand, like UHD video, the G3 will deliver impressive results. Now again, the G3 packs a 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and laser targeted autofocus, so its ability to capture stills and even Ultra HD video is pretty strong. However, LG's camera software is a bit spartan and it even lacks control over various still shot settings versus a stock Android camera setup. Regardless, the G3 does a really nice job of grabbing quality stills quickly and easily, no fuss, no muss. And in reality, it's the way most mainstream users like to take pics with a phone camera. Only power users will likely miss the extra controls. Shooting video with the G3 proved it to be capable here as well, though we did notice responsiveness to lighting conditions varied in video mode, though low light still shots were sharp with minimal grain. LG has lightly skinned the G3's Android KitKat setup with a flat, clean look that has good contrast and an uncomplicated interface. We like it very much, actually. Swiping to the left of the home screen brings up the tips and information on features of the G3, as well as LG's Health app, which has standard pedometer functionality, as well as tracking and mapping and training statistics functionality. This can be pretty useful if you're a Fitbit type. And of course, LG's signature QSlide app functionality is still here with the ability to run multiple key apps like the web browser, messaging, the phone dialer, video calendar calculator, and even email apps in a window. And you can adjust that window's transparency as well to establish a foreground and background effect. There's also a dual window mode still with the G3 and that allows you to split the screen between two apps and resize that area between the two to dedicate more or less screen real estate to a particular app that you're running. Now performance wise for gaming and in the benchmarks, the G3 has plenty of muscle on board with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801's Adreno 330 graphics engine offering robust performance for just about anything you can throw at it. It's actually one of the strongest smartphone processors on the market currently and whether you're drifting down the boulevard at 
breakneck speeds or just swimming with the sharks looking for a tourist to snack on, the LG G3 will be up to the task, offering great performance. We did notice the slightest of lag here and there in certain non-gaming apps, where loading things up on that QHD display seemed to trip up the device just the slightest bit. However, since we had a very early pre-retail unit for testing, it's not much of a concern to us. LG could easily optimize things and remedy that with a future firmware update. Battery life with the G3 is expected to be solid, though we're still stepping through testing. However, the G3's 3000 mAh battery is more than capable of bringing 8-9 to nine hours of moderate use for day-long uptime between charges, at least from our initial experience with the device. Pricing for the G3 hasn't been set quite yet with the major carriers, but we're told it's coming to virtually all of them, including AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. Make sure you stop by HotHardware.com for the full review with all of our benchmark data and further analysis, and subscribe to our channel here for future reviews, webcasts, and event coverage. I'm Dave Altavilla with HotHardware.com and the LG G3 Android Superphone. Thanks for stopping by.